it's fun to get to do this because it isn't so much my life anymore. There was a time and a season where uh, preaching and teaching was really the main thing that I did. Um, uh, as Jody said, there was, there's been lots of shifts, a couple of shifts. One was uh, for us as a training base where we really switched to a strategic ministry center. And, uh, and so our, we stopped running our training schools for the most part. We had a few here and there with our DTS and our Crossroads and, and um, uh, SOFM in the middle there. But, um, but that was a significant shift. And so there's been a season for me where I was primarily leading. And it, it's an interesting thing because it's quite different. The lifestyle of a leader actually, I mean, of course, character is always underlying for us as Christians. But the lifestyle and the habits and the just like it's different for a training base than a ministry base. It's also different as, as a leader than it is as um, uh, a preacher and teacher primarily. There are some significant distinctions. And we'll be talking about that uh, as we go. And then, uh, as Jody mentioned, the last uh, few years, my, it has been a, a, a very big shift for me. I stepped down from, uh, from leadership, and I've done very little uh, preaching just here and there uh, sporadically, but have been primarily focused at home um, uh, with my uh, kids and particularly with my son, John, um, uh, who is doing very well. He's dyslexic, and, uh, and at the end of his uh, second grade year, so he, after he had turned eight, um, it was clear that, uh, that, that we needed to do some more strategic intervention for him. He had, we'd known since he was four that there were different things that his learning style was very, very different and, uh, and that he couldn't hear sounds in the same way. Uh, that's kind of the underlying thing for dyslexic kids is that they can't hear sounds so clearly and to translate the sound to a written code, that piece is very, very difficult. Um, so they do well in something like Mandarin because it's a not phonetic language. Um, but for a phonetic language, it's very, very difficult um, for kids. So um, I stepped down at that point um, and, uh, and came home to a classroom of one. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's been good. Uh, my, I, I had to learn a little bit different pace. My son, I, I probably blew him away a little bit because I've been used to to a little bit, <laughs> you was like needing to turn down the volume, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when you've been teaching to a larger group and you're teaching one-on-one -on -one with one, the intensity of that can be significant. So, and it, it was intense for both he and I uh, because we had to, uh, to do some catch-up for him. Um, at the age of, of eight, that's a big, um, a big difference. We, if you're not reading by age eight for most, for dyslexic kids, they generally say that you've got about three to, about uh, two to three years of intensive teaching, about um, four to six hours, four days a week, focusing on closing the gap. And so obviously a school can't do that. Um, and so we actually ended up doing three, about three years of schooling in two years um, for him to be able to catch, catch up. But God has been gracious and met us in our family and him and a number of other health issues that went along uh, with that uh, for him. So my life has been different. Um, and the lifestyle of a, of a uh, from the lifestyle of a preacher and teacher to the lifestyle of, of a mom uh, homeschooling and uh, closing the gap in some of those other ways. But um, God <laughs> is gracious and good in the midst of it all. And I do believe that, um, that there are things that we continue to learn and develop and God uses all of it. Um, a favorite book of mine, and you'll see throughout the week, I'm a book pusher. <laughs> um, this is a book, Focus Lives, that uh, has had a significant uh, influence on me. It's by a, a man named J. Robert Clinton. Uh, he was a teacher at Fuller Seminary for many years. His, uh, his son, Richard, was, uh, was a pastor in, um, in the vineyard and had a significant influence on me and on Rick, um, he focuses on lives of preachers and teachers, ministers, and he looks at uh, kind of a timeline of their life to see what are the most significant things that influenced them and developed them and were foundational in shaping them in terms of their life and ministry, All right? So we'll draw from this significantly. And what we see um, as he focuses on the timelines of various people's lives that it's not always neat, all right? 
it's really nice. We, we um, as believers and ministers, you know, we have our idea of what it should look like, right? It should look like this. We, we do our study, we enter into ministry, and then it develops in this way, and then we get this, you know, this release, and it comes together, and, and our role, and our capacity, and our training all come together, and we have this great convergence, all right? And, uh, and there, our ministry is launched, and we're super effective, and of course, that's the ideal. We would all love it to be that way, but how many of you have, have experienced that there's a lot of surprises in your journey with God? <laughs> Right? There's a lot of surprises in our journey with God. And, and uh, for me, this surprise of my son um, needing uh, this kind of intensive ministry that nobody else could do was a big surprise. That wasn't on my radar. And, uh, and of course, as somebody who believes in faith and, and asking God and pressing in and had seen lots of mountains moved, that was one particular mountain that, that didn't move. You know, what, what happens when a mountain doesn't move? What are your options? <laughs> you, you know, got to go over it, under it, around it, you know? And, uh, and that's the reality of our lives as preachers and teachers. Our lives as ministers of the gospel is that there's times that God gives you faith and strength and, and uh, speaks to you to, and mountains are moved in people's lives. But we also have to know how to help people and how to journey ourselves when a mountain doesn't move. And we have to make the adjustments, right? And that's significant. I'm sure, Joy, you can testify to that as a parent, right? There's lots of mountains that don't move, right? When you're not just by yourself and you've got to factor in husbands and wives and other people that you're working with, there's lots of situations that will... will um, uh, interrupt our lives, but God uses all of them. God doesn't waste any of them, and that's a very significant piece in this process as we look at the life of a preacher and teacher is how do we react and how do we respond when things don't go <laughs> as we expect. All right, what I want us to do, and let, let me just pray for us first, and uh, this week we're going to be especially looking at two primary components, all right? Through the school, of course, we're looking at character, all right, and competence, all right? For effective ministry, you've got to have both, character and competence, okay? Both of those are essential. I'll uh, write on the board as I know for second language is helpful. So character and competence. Um, the ability to do a good job. All right, competence, the ability to do a good job, the skills to do a good job. And uh, in B2PS, we'll be looking at both of those. All right, it's possible to have a great and godly character and not be competent in the word right? It's possible to have a great and godly character, be competent in the word, but not very competent in how we communicate it, all right? We have to have actually all of those three. Competence goes in, it really has two capacities we've got to have for our competence. We've got to have skills, so we'll just talk about skills, okay? Skills, uh, in uh, the word, right? Understanding. And then in communication. All right, so the school will be looking at all of these things, all right? Character, understanding, communication in these things. And this week we're primarily focused here although it, we see how this influences this, all right? Character develops competence, okay? And so we'll look at those things. Who is the preacher and teacher, all right, that has been most influential in your life, okay? So who, 
All right, and there may be more than one, but I'm looking for the, I'm not looking for a long list. I want who's really stood out in being an influence in your life, all right? Who, and then I want you to tell me why, all right? And then specifically what it is about them, all right? What it is, okay? So who they are, why they have influenced you, all right? And then what, all right, was most significant about what they did, okay? Let me pray first before we start. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to you. You are the master teacher. And Father, um, from start to finish, this is about you. And so, Father, I thank you for ordaining this school, for bringing these students, and for this time that we get to spend together, Father. And I ask that it would be rich with us meeting you, encountering you, going deeper with you. And Father, that we could enter into your life as a preacher and teacher. That you would be the one who would speak through us, in us and through us, uh, for the glory of your name. And so we pray this, Jesus, now in your name. Amen. <clears throat>